Hello YouTube, and this is my November update on the MQTT wall controller project. Um, it is now in the wall and I'm going to show you what I'm doing next and what it looks like now. In fact, right this second it is not in the wall. It is hanging down from the wall as you can see. Um, but I'm going to show you how it goes in the wall and what it looks like and what I'm doing next with the project. A quick recap on this project. Basically it's an Arduino 25, uh, Mega 2560. Um, with four boards on top of it. They are the boards that I've designed. The Arduino Mega is here at the bottom. And then this is this one here is the kind of my baseboard, which supplies power and networking to the rest of the thing and to the Arduino. And on the baseboard as well, there's a little temperature sensor. Um, and then, so there's a baseboard and then there's a top board, that's this one here. Um, and the top board, um, upon that board is a kind of button board here and another button board here so they're actually kind of pretty tightly placed on top um, just with a kind of header pins height worth of difference between those two boards um, and that, that's a header socket worth of height difference between those two boards um, so the whole lot just about fits in this 47 mil back box um, this is a dry lining back box. It will also fit in a metal back box. Um, the reason I've got this light switch here as well, I could technically get rid of that, um, but that's there because um, this isn't actually a dimmer, um, it's just a controller. And the actual dimmers for my circuits in the bedroom, uh, well, there's two circuits that connect to my wall and my ceiling. And I've just implemented um, another circuit with the bedside lamps as well. Um, but that's not controlled by that, that's controlled by a dimmer socket from Lightwave RF, which is separate. But this really doesn't need to be used anymore, it's just there because I haven't got centralised wiring for my lighting in this particular abode. But when I move into my new place, I will have. Um, so just kind of ignore that thing for now. Um, so yes, here's the uh, Arduino Mega and the four DIY boards, and I'll show you what it looks like in the wall. Here we go. And here it is after I have screwed the um, faceplate, well, the rear plate of the faceplate onto the whole project, um, which is done through um, some 3mm, some M3 machine screws. And here it is without the front plate, but with the back plate screwed into the wall. So here it is in the wall with the front plate on and the proximity bringing the thing to life. And I'll just show you the reboot sequence. Let me just focus on that. Yeah, lights are dimming because it's not being touched for a few seconds. And then hopefully that display goes off. There we go. So to bring up my diagnostics menu, I double press the first button and hit reboot. And then we can reboot it from the front panel. Ooh, night Rider. Getting IP address. A little bit slow, isn't it? Eventually got it. There we go, up and running. There it is in the wall. And here it is working, in case you wanna see. Um, let's go into bedtime mode, dims the lights. Um, that one is not on any circuit at all. I'm just turn off. Bedtime mode, bedtime lights on, ceiling lights off, wall light on. Um, sleep mode, interestingly enough, does more than just that. It turns the electric blanket on and turns some music on and puts the lights on really low and they dim over half an hour. Um, and the music goes off over half an hour as well. Um, and that's what happens. Um, but I've got a random jazz mode. And different radio presets and that's the outside temperature and these are the unfinished modes. Let's turn on the lights to full. Can you see what I'm doing? I'll turn the music down, press it to turn it off. There we have it. So now I'm going to show you, because um, quite a few people have asked me if I'm publishing code and the answer is yes. And the po project is published here github.com forward slash hazymat, H-A-Z-Y-M-A-T. And in here we have three projects which I've just um, uploaded. 
Um, Open Hab Chrome, which is a simple Chrome extension, which is also available in the Chrome store. Um, please note my disclaimer, it does not work um, for authentic with authentication or HTTPS for various reasons I won't go into here. I haven't got that working. And I don't think I will as well. Um, but it's great for using inside your home network. So take a look at that if you use Open Hab. Um, and then Fleetwood. Fleetwood is the one that we've just seen, is the PCBs that we've just seen. And that's the Eagle folder. And there's the upper board, the lower board, the controller board, and the function button board. Those are the four PCBs I talked about. Um, and then there's the Arduino sketch in here, which you're more than welcome to um, have a look through. It's quite a lot of quite a lot of the sketch. Um, anyway, that's that. That's Fleetwood. Now, the thing that I wanted to tell you about, which I'm quite excited about and also full of trepidation, is this thing here called Fleetwood Mega, which is version two of the baseboard of Fleetwood. So rather than having an Arduino with four um, boards stacked on top in a kind of a shield, like a hybrid soldered on shield kind of way of doing it, um, uh, James from Open Hub Forum, in fact, I'm not really sure how I met him online, um, but James, anyway, has convinced me, um, rightly so, to redesign the Arduino Mega um, from scratch to include the W5100 and to include all of my uh, components. So it all fits on one board, so it will fit in a smaller back box and it will negate a whole load of small little problems that I've had, um, as well as making it possible to power by PoE properly rather than having to splice the network cable um, and all kinds of improvements like that. Anyway, if you're interested in, in what I'm doing next, Fleetwood Mega is the bad boy. Um, and here's a, just a list of spec. Um, the published project really is nothing at the moment. Um, so I'll just quickly show you, uh, where is it? Fleetwood Mega, let's open this project up. <laughs> I've started it um, based on the Etherten, sorry, on the Ethan Mega, which is by Freetronics. And I've ripped out a whole load of stuff that I don't need, like the SD card and um, various other bits and pieces, and kept in the W5100, that's that section there, and of course the Arduino Mega. And then um, I've redesigned the outline of the board so that it fits in my dry lining box or into a metal back box. I've measured it for both. Um, and so that I can maximise, really maximise the space. Um, I've not placed the components yet on the board. Uh, well, they're there, but I've not positioned them or repositioned them yet. Um, so when you download, if you want to have a look, um, you're going to find a completely unfinished project. I've not, it's not rooted, it's not positioned, and I've not added my, my part of the project. I've only ripped bits out of the Freetronics and um, redone this kind of slightly curved corner profile. Anyway, so that's that's what I'm working on. So if anyone would like to contribute to this project, I'd be more than happy to take suggestions and contributions. In fact, I'd be very happy to take them because I am a little bit out of my depth when it comes to designing an Arduino from scratch, something I've never done before and it seems very scary. Um, so yeah, welcoming the contributions and uh, cheerio until next time. I'll give you an update when this thing is underway.